Hi guys, my name is Emma, and in this video, I'm going to share the successful essays that got me into UCLA, as well as UCI and UCSD. I'm sharing a lot of these since I know college is a really stressful time and finding inspiration for writing is never easy. I figured that this would be a really good opportunity to give some guidance on how to write your essays, as well as just a place to start for a lot of people. No journey is linear and college is not the end of the world, so don't compare yourself to me or anybody else on the internet because that's really dumb. Also, this goes without saying, but copying anyone's essays is not going to get you in. They have everybody's on file. Don't do it. You can come up with something great on your own. Also, for context, I was an out-of-state student. I live in Jersey, so if you're interested in seeing the stats, and extracurriculars that got me in, there's gonna be a link here. So definitely check that out. Anyways, let's begin. For the UC supplements, you get eight prompts and you only need to answer four of them. I chose a, diff a bunch of different ones so I could kind of show off my personality as well as the different extracurriculars I've done throughout school. But, um, yeah, all of them are around 350 to 400 words. Oh, no, 350 to 300 words. So, for this first one, the prompt was, describe an example of your leadership experience in which you have positively influenced others, helped resolve disputes, or contributed to group efforts over time. So, this was my response to that. Dressed in my pink Korean hanbok, I stood proudly next to Alishba, who was dressed in her Pakistani salwar kameez. As we served pierogies, samosas, and kimchi stuffed dumplings to passing classmates, we couldn't help but admire the sea of salivating students we generated. After months of preparation, our culture fair was thriving. Over the past year, my peers and I had many changes and additions we wanted to make within the school. Some of us were unanimously frustrated by the school's lack of representation. Others were upset that they had no access to information about secondary education. No one had an outlet to voice their concerns. Through founding Falcons for Change, a student activist organization, I decided we changed that. We began our work with smaller projects, such as providing free feminine hygiene products in the bathrooms. Hearing from embarrassed students who are hesitant to ask others for sanitary pads or simply in need of an emergency change, our vision resonated with the student body. As we gained momentum, we began planning towards a much larger project, a school-wide cultural food fair. It took months to organize, generated many rejected proposals, and filled weeks with stress. However, watching students excitedly wolf down unique ethnic foods like kebab, morcia, and tripe, foods that many students, including me, used to be ridiculed for eating growing up, washed away all the old memories of mocking glares and pinched noses. The weird smells and aversion to ethnic dishes was now being overridden by genuine curiosity and interest. Standing alongside my club members at that moment, serving plates and screaming to Indian, Korean, and Latin music made all of the hard work worthwhile. This essay I wrote about my time as the founder and president of Falcons for Change, which I mentioned was a student activist club in my school. We worked really hard to kind of speak out for the students and we had a really large LGBTQ and person of color membership since a lot of them didn't feel that they were getting represented in the school. With this essay, I really wanted to talk about the community work I did with my club and how it made an impact with each person. Even though it's only a school club, I wanted to write about it anyways because it genuinely did make an impact on students and I thought it was one of the more thoughtful things I did in high school. So the next one I wrote was 
What would you say is your greatest talent or skill? How have you developed and demonstrated that talent over time? So this one is kind of just talking about my personality. There's nothing really that deep to it. It's kind of this, I use this essay to develop my personal character to the admissions officer. I wrote about how I like talking. So this is the second one. My mother often likes to joke that the very first thing I learned to do was use my words. Mumbling incoherently, my words initially carried me further than my chubby legs could walk. At school, my friends would unanimously agree with her. To them, I am the chattiest person in the hallway. Giggling, they always say that they don't need to search for me with their eyes. They search with their ears, listening to me run my mouth a mile a minute at the other end of the hallway. Whether I'm chatting enthusiastically with my teachers or wheezing at someone's joke, words simply follow me. My words are often used to amplify my voice. When giving oral presentations in school, they allow me to enunciate my thoughts clearly to the furthest reaches of the classroom. During nail-biting tennis games and long deuce points, they uplift my team with shouts of encouragement and praise. My words are not always most effective when driven to the highest decibel, nor selectively used at maximum volume. They are plastered throughout the slideshows, posters, and flyers, decorating the hallways and smart boards of classrooms. They carry me through class discussions. Molding my curious thoughts into concrete questions, they are facilitators of verbal and intellectual discourse. My words are the gilded armor that defend my theses, but also the sharp sword that punctures holes into the closed-minded perspectives of classmates. Most of all, my words carry me through conversations that need to be made. When I speak on behalf of my peers to our principal or board of education, they outline the points of change we want accomplished. They secure stipends for important club advisors and student activities. When fighting on behalf of my Asian American community and composing awareness posts, they punctuate every microaggression, stereotype, and ignorant act enforced by modern media. They are unafraid and unwilling to back down. Using my words as a medium, I speak my thoughts and changes into reality and urge others to do the same. So obviously for this one, I opened with something more personable and something that put the admissions officers into the daily life of Emma. But I kind of developed this idea that I like talking, not only by just talking about how I ramble, but also what I use my words for and why I like talking. So in the second paragraph, I can I talk about how I use my words to amplify my voice and make it louder, but I also contrast that with the idea that I can also use my words in a quiet and low-key <laughs> manner. And I think personally this essay was kind of what did that for me. It helped them open their eyes to who I am as a person and kind of understand why, where, how I like to act. Okay, so this is the third essay I wrote. This is the one that did kind of well on TikTok, which I'm really grateful for. But anyways, this one, the topic was, think about an academic subject that inspires you. Describe how you have furthered this interest inside and or outside of the classroom. So for this one, I wrote about how I learned Spanish throughout my years in high school and how I not only applied the learning to my life, but also how I used it in a professional setting. While there are many subjects in school that I enjoy, hearing my teacher greet me every morning with Buenos Dias, Mami, has always been my favorite part of the day. Coming from a mixed Korean and Japanese background, I've always been acutely aware of how important language is in daily life. Conversing with my harmony or obachan, I would always see a sigh of relief and ease of nerves when they heard their, 
native tongue, Japanese or Korean. I was a first-hand witness to the power of understanding and empathizing with someone. I always hope to do the same for others. Thus, when given the opportunity to learn Spanish in school, I was more than excited. I began in seventh grade with vocab for numbers, colors, and family members. I stumbled through staccato words and punchy phrases. As my lessons grew to involve grammar patterns and idiomatic expressions, my words turned to sentences and flourished into fluid phrasing and full conversation. My pursuit of Spanish knowledge has led me far from my desk to many concrete destinations and enlightening experiences. It has led me to many taquerias and piragua carts in pursuit of the many different foods that characterize the Hispanic American upbringing. It threw me into dance circles at quinceañeras, where I attempted and failed to dance to bachata and merengue with friends. However, it also opened my eyes to some graver aspects of the Hispanic American upbringing. While working at, not saying the name, it's a law office, I was able to listen to many immigration cases clients had. Some grew up undocumented, the fear of deportation threatening them and their families. Others battled through cartel trauma and domestic abuse. At my various governmental internships, I would listen to similar stories over the phone. Many were stressed and frustrated that they could not detail their story in English the way they wanted to. But speaking to them in their native tongue, I was taken back to my childhood and my grandparents' faces. These are the moments that Spanish has been the most fulfilling subject to study. So for this essay, I really wanted to tie in my personal experience with something that I felt was really intellectually stimulating, which is my pursuit of learning Spanish. I studied Spanish a lot throughout high school and I practiced mainly with my Hispanic friends and her grandma. Um, my specific friend that I practiced with her grandma, we would go over to her house a lot and she would make us empanadas, which were really good. They were really good. And so I've always really appreciated the Latino community and growing up around it. In terms of the actual essay, I think that this one was really successful because just by speaking about my experience with Spanish, just showed an open-minded and willing to learn mentality, being open to new cultures and understanding other people, not only set my personality to them, but also showed the dedication I have towards understanding a subject and why I understood the subject, which is coming from a place of familial appreciation and empathy, which is really important because obviously a lot of the times people take subjects and they don't know why they take it. They just wanted it for the credits or something like that. So I think this not only helped me stand out as an empathetic human being, but also just as a student who likes to learn and apply their learning to different areas of life, which I talked about when I mentioned the internships I did, government offices, and the law office. So for my final essay, I wrote about my Asian American community, and I talked about some of the work I did in the same vein as Stop Asian Hate. Um, so the prompt was, what have you done to make your school or your community a better place? I responded with, When the term Wuhan virus began circulating, I didn't need great intuition to understand how detrimental this would be for Asian Americans like myself. Watching the news and hearing stories from other people began to make me anxious. Again, I said to myself, how many more hate crimes do I have to witness? Indignant with people's judgmental stares and frustrated by their ignorant assumptions, I was sick of my community being seen as the model minority, a community that doesn't speak out. Coincidentally, 
I stumbled upon Asian activists, a group of young teens like me who use social media to speak out against harmful stereotypes and issues that plague the AAPI community. I immediately began working with like-minded Asian teens dedicated to ousting these long-standing negative portrayals. Many of us were as close as 30 minutes away, while others were as far as Australia. With members representing countries from Mongolia to Kazakhstan, we used our similar passion for social justice to make our voices heard. Our team was close-knitted, working extensively on on covering fun topics like Asian American artists, but also serious topics like encounters with racism. Asian Activists was met with large-scale success, garnering thousands of likes, shares, and follows. However, it also resonated with many personally. Many fellow members of the AAPI community thanked us for bringing attention to microaggressions cultural appropriation, and casual racism, all of which they experience regularly. Others of different backgrounds were glad to learn more and empathize greatly with some shared experiences, such as first-generation struggles and uncommon ethnic traditions. Personal friends of many members, including my, myself, have sent messages about how our work has driven them to be more culturally sensitive and hold people accountable. While our team of 30 Asian teenagers could not completely put an end to issues with global consequences, we were able to initiate the conversations many people were too afraid to, providing a positive catalyst for future change. So in this final essay, again, I talked a lot about my community, which I thought was really important. Obviously, I'm Asian American and at the time, I was only 14, so I didn't really, I couldn't just go out and march. I didn't, I didn't even know how to take the bus. So the second best option for me was using social media as a tool to educate others from my home, especially during COVID when it wasn't really socially acceptable to leave your house. So I did this. I really liked my team. And I think by talking about my community again, I, not only emphasized more of my characteristics, which are that I'm outspoken, I fight for change, etc. Overall, I think the reason that these four essays were really successful is because they all tied into a similar theme as one another, but they touched upon it in a different way that was personal to me, but also easy to emphasize. Em empathize with. For example, I talked a lot about how culture is important to me, which I think is easy to see with all of them. Student culture at my school, my own personal Asian American community and its culture, as well as appreciating other cultures is something that really reflected highly from my essays. And the idea of problem solving, I think, also came up where I talked a lot about how I helped work with not only my school, but my Asian American community as a whole to drive change for the future also reflected really well with the admissions officers since they want to see people who are given a problem, but work towards a solution for it. So in my case, I had students at my school who didn't feel represented. So with the problem, we created a solution, which was a culture fair. I think that was really significant for my application. And, you know, in the midst of the COVID pandemic, seeing Asian hate crimes and Asian American slander, I combated that with Asian activists, which was the group I worked with. So I think seeing those things are what help them sort out who they like and who they don't like in terms of their application. They want to see people who are working to be future leaders and not just joining a club because they don't know why they joined the club, but the people that join the clubs with a personal reason and a personal drive to fix things that are genuinely meaningful to them. 
there are any other college topics you would like me to talk about on this channel, please comment them below and I will do my best to film one and help you guys out. If you enjoyed this video and thought it was helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel. I will post a lot more college stuff, college advice, as well as daily life vlogs. So please subscribe and like and comment if there's anything else you'd like me to talk about. I'd be happy to answer all of your questions.